CSS. Love it or hate it, it is a huge part of how we build the web. Every year, CSS changes a lot, both the standard and the incredible tools and libraries that we're building around it. Recently, a survey was created, the state of CSS, to try and go over all of these changes and see how the community as a whole is feeling about it. I love these types of surveys and I think we can get a lot of good info from it. So let's dive right in. State of CSS. CSS is going through a period of unprecedented progress. Between has, container queries, subgrid, and many more, new features are making their way into browsers seemingly every month. The consequence of all this growth is that things can get a bit overwhelming. Thankfully, this year, we had Chen Hui Jing to help design the survey and guide us through the CSS jungle. Speaking of the survey, did you know browser vendors use its data as part of the interop initiative to help prioritize which features to work on next? Finally, we are introducing features or a new feature this year, the ability to customize charts with your own data filters. We're excited to see what kind of new insights you'll come up with. Sasha. Sasha puts a lot of work into these surveys, so huge shout out to him. He always sends me the link a bit early, and I very rarely end up going over it early because I want to show y'all once it's public. So also, if you don't know, I'm doing this live on Twitch right now. So make sure you're following me on Twitch and on YouTube if you want to be here live when we do all this cool stuff. This is an important thing to consider, the country or region. There's always these demographics at the beginning of these surveys, and it really helps contextualize who is taking the survey because a significant percentage of developers are based out of the US, but it's way less than half. And from here, we are seeing raw counts. How do I change this to percent? Oh, that's fair, actually. 10% of respondents are from the US. Over 5% are from Germany, which is interesting. Germany's over half of the US. I'm curious who was sharing sharing this link and how it got sent around, but it did make it to over 9,000 developers. So at the very least we have enough people, but there might be biases of like one particular library or some company in Germany sent it out to a bunch of people that might influence the results here. So obviously as with all of these surveys, nothing here is set in stone, concrete, a guaranteed, like this is the reality of the world. But a survey that 9,000 people took called the state of CSS is something worth looking into and learning from. So what language do people use? 75% were English and everything else was pretty split. I would argue most developers speak English, not because English is this great language we all love to learn and use, but a lot of the developer tools, documentation and stuff we work with every day, even like HTML itself has a lot of English in the tags. You have to know some amount of English to get by. It's not surprising that a survey like this reaches English audiences better. How old are you? This looks a lot like my age demographics on Twitch, honestly. Yeah, this range is too big. 25 to 34 is a huge range, so that's gonna catch a lot. I would have broken this down a little more, but still cool. Years of experience, that's a much more normal curve. Actually interesting to see that six to 10 years is bigger than three to five. We're aging, y'all. We're getting we're getting old as an industry. And then company size. I will work at your company, including yourself. These are always interesting because there's obviously more companies with 20 people than there are with over a thousand, but a company with a thousand people has a thousand people at it. You would need a lot of 20 person companies to employ as many people. So this mostly checks out. Higher education degree. Uh, yeah, it's always nice to see these. How many people answered this question? 5,500 answered this question. 6,500 answered this one. So there are a couple people who aren't employed who answered this and not that, but not that many. And of employed people, a significant percentage seem to be having degrees. And again, I'm not saying you need a degree to be a programmer. I'm just saying having a degree tends to make it easier to get a job. And there's a reason why the majority of employed programmers have degrees. It's a nice base filter. Don't ruin your life or like go super out of your way to like spend a shitload of money and go get a degree. But like if you're fresh out of high school and you have the choice, it's worth doing. It's not a bad thing. I feel like we, we demonize degrees way too much. I have a whole video about that. So check it out if you haven't already. It's, it's super underperformed. Now yearly income. Yeah, these are always interesting numbers. Technically for my salary, I fit in this range now, the 50 to 100. So I'm in that good old biggest range. And then gender. This is better than in a lot of these surveys, but it's still not great. Still not great numbers that there's almost 10 times as many men responding as women. And then race and ethnicity. Again, roughly what we expected, but it's nice seeing so many others that aren't just white dudes coming in. And I expect these numbers to keep going up year over year. Disability stats, very, very low numbers. Again, like there was a lot of disabled people on the web. Being a disabled developer is incredibly challenging. Huge, huge shout out to the developers who are, are fighting visual impairments, cognitive impairments, and many other different diverse things. You all have to work way harder to build these tools because the tools we use to build are nowhere near as accessible as the tools we're building with them. So y'all work hard. We appreciate you a ton. And the source this is how people find out about the survey. I didn't shout it out, so I'm not going to come up on here. I wish you'd hit me up earlier because I would have absolutely shouted it out. And it's always fun to, to get my number really big on there. And I don't need to use the data explorer. I want to go into features. Now things get interesting. Feature overview. So big circle, the faded out circle, that's awareness. And then the strong co colored circle on the inside, that's used it. So gap, that's huge. To anybody saying gap isn't ready, the majority of people who took the survey know about it. And of them, the vast majority used it. Come on, just use gap. It's great. We don't need to do a lot of the crazy margin things we've done before. And check out my video about why I hate margins, which isn't out yet, but will be soon. 
variables. Cool that we are using these more and that most people who know about them use them. It's a little chaotic, but they're good. Aspect ratio, that's a higher usage than I would have expected. CSS filter as well, good bit higher than I would have expected. Lower percent usage, but pretty large number of people know it. Intrinsic sizing, cool to see in here. Scroll behavior, I wish more people use scroll behavior. Smooth scroll is really nice. CSS, can I not see what this is? That's annoying. Okay, if I have it in this view, I can see it or not. Questionable. Why do some of these not have their names? Whatever. It's funny that the CSS survey has bad CSS. Yes. What's the most aware that has nobody using it? Like wide gamut colors. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a lot of you who know about it and almost nobody using it yet. Checks out. Good old line clamp. Good to see that getting more use. And here is over time. I just want to see gap in here. Yeah, look at that. Over the last two years, Gap went from like 50% to 90%. You can use Gap now. We're good. You can stop the stupid fight. Knowledge score. Of all the features, how much do people know about? This is actually a lot more evenly distributed than I would have expected. I wish I took the survey because I would have told you all what I scored. And I probably would have been 40 to 60 is my guess. But I've also had really good luck with a lot of these like scoring higher than I would have expected. Anchor positioning was added to people's reading lists a lot. Interesting. And view transition. Always cool to see view transition as we talked about or even earlier today on stream with the Astro stuff. Subgrid. Good to see. Oh, no, not Shadow Dom. Keep that out of my life. Cool. That's features. How about layouts? That's a lot more subgrid knowledge and usage than I expected. Only 25% didn't know about subgrid. CSS writing modes. That's just the term for directions for text. Makes sense. CSS logical properties. Also cool to see aspect ratio blowing up, going from in 2020, 22% usage to over 65%. That's a 3x. Aspect ratio is just part of the web now. Content visibility going down is fascinating. Gap for Flexbox. Look at that. Look at that win. The size of this victory is hard to put into words. This whole video is going to be me hyped on Gap, isn't it? Container. That knowledge is growing, but the I guess that's a pretty big going from 12 to 26% year over year. Cool to see. Object view box. All looks good to me. Still very small, but cool to see progress being made. Name viewports, media, anchor positioning, all cool stuff. Let's go to shapes and graphic. See, so this filter effects. Interesting that it went down 2019 to 2020, but then started getting bigger again. Backdrop filters doing well. Intrinsic size keyboards. View transition. I guess this is the first year it's a thing. Pretty cool that we're almost 40% awareness. There's too much going on in color. I don't have any thoughts here. Interactions. This is more interesting. Scroll snap. Scroll snap's dope. Cool to see that being used more. Over scroll behavior. I, I've been bit by this a few times, but it is really nice to control this. Touch action, I have not used. I actually I haven't honestly even heard of touch action. So it's cool that that's being included. What does it do? Ah, so you can say like this can't be touched. Scroll bar gutter, I've had to deal with too many times. Typography features, font display. Line clamp. Line clamp's great. Variable fonts. Interesting that this is another one of those ones that went down. Text wrap balance. Interesting and all. Accessibility. Very important. Prefers reduced motion. Love that this is a thing now. Prefers color scheme. Okay with this being a thing now. Prefers reduced data. Love that that's a thing. Color scheme. Pretty happy with overall. I, I feel like we've went too far with the dark mode stuff, but it's fine. Prefers contrast is hopefully your site's contrasting enough without having to set a prefer, but it's good that you can, I guess. Yeah. Other features, variables doing well, supports doing OK. CSS comparison er, functions doing pretty well, property doing OK. Has blowing up, has now over 50% utilization, which is huge. Where is over 50% awareness, but not over that 50% utilization mark just yet. Cascade layers are uh, interesting. It's cool to see some people answered, but we're still under 50% knowledge. So I guess I should show this for everybody. It lets you have more dynamic control of cascade behaviors. It's an interesting thing. I've never seen it used in a way that like really clicks for me. It's not quite scoped. It's controlled cascade. And Shadow Dom, ah, Trig, ah. Keep your math away from me. CSS nesting. I'm surprised this isn't 100%. Anyways, the thing we're all here for, CSS frameworks. Tailwind's dipping slightly? How did Tailwind peak in 2020? Oh, I guess this is retention. Let's look at usage. Bootstrap is still very high up for usage. 80% usage, but how is their retention? Oh yeah, Bootstrap's retention is shit. Yeah, 31%. This is the important thing. Tailwind is one of the few that has usage percentages increasing meaningfully. How about interest? Open props getting a lot of interest. We can look at the rankings, which are very bugged. Yep, Bootstrap's at 100% awareness. Tailwind's at 97, and then everything else is below 70. That's fascinating. And like the only two that are getting heavy usage. God, look at that Tailwind glow up. 6%, 26%, 39, 46, 51. Jesus. Then bootstraps would use again, bombing, and there would not use expanding massively. And then Tailwind, 
would not use is only 12%. Not interested is 25, which is meaningful for sure, but over 50% being interested or would use again is huge. These are really good numbers. Tailwind's positive to negative is the best here by a lot and Bootstrap's the worst by a lot. So that checks out. Material UI got written in a lot, but also actually only 38 times out of the 9,000 or so. There aren't many people saying unhappy with the state of CSS frameworks. That's a really good sign. That's cool to see. And 0% said very unhappy. Literally zero users said they're unhappy with the state of CSS frameworks. That's impressive. I'm not saying CSS is a solved problem. I'm saying that we've made a shitload of progress for that to be the case. CSS and JS. These are things get a little, little more painful. We got style components on its decline. Theme UI, vanilla extract getting less usage too. That's interesting. CSS modules are slowly doing better. Style JSX slowly doing worse. Vanilla extract. I need the other chart for this one. You can see style components peaked in 2020 and has been slowly declining since. That lines up with my experience with it as well. JSS, just massive wall of not interested and never heard. Emotions, slow death is continuing to be visible. CSS modules having a nice uptick, which is cool to see. And vanilla extract still not very well known. But if we look here, we'll see CSS models and style components are still relatively positive. Nothing compared to like Tailwind's numbers. It's sad that Shad CN wasn't in this, but yeah. I'm curious if anybody wrote that in here. They did not. Maybe it's in other tools. SAS and SCSS as well as post CSS still being used heavily. No surprises there. Prettier by over half of the respondents. That's 5,000-ish people of the 9,000-ish who took it. Just use prettier, guys. Come on. CSS Nano is getting a lot more attention than I would have expected. That's cool to see. Which browsers do you primarily work in during dev? Firefox is much higher than I expected, though. Honestly, I'm more likely to work in Safari iOS than I am in Firefox at this point. Now, CSS usage. Which form factors do you test on? Desktop and smartphone are the big two. That's a lot higher than I would have expected for tablet. I don't test anything in a tablet layout ever. I don't give a shit. Testing tools. Like, the fact that people test on tablet more than they test in Axe and Lighthouse, that's scary to me. Desktop with keyboard only. You Vim people. Get out of the survey. Print. Interesting. TV. I feel like I would see more TV people, but it is what it is. What do you use mainly for CSS? Web apps. Yep. Blogs. Yep. Marketing, design systems, desktop apps. Desktop apps outranking mobile apps. I mean, I guess that makes sense. You use Lightroom for desktop. That's pretty accepted. You have to have a whole separate style solution for something like React Native on mobile, or you can embed a web view, which everyone knows sucks. So, and the industry. Interesting. It's a very diverse set on the bottom half there. And again, 5,700 of the survey respondents are using CSS professionally. Only 400 are using it as a student or as a hobby. And then there's the 2,700 that didn't answer. On this side, it's almost all your time is CSS. The other side, almost all of it's JS. A lot of people, five plus, but very few 100% JS and zero 100% CSS. But there's a, a more flat space here, which is interesting. This is a fascinating chart. People are avoiding has because of browser behaviors that makes sense. Missing features, animate, auto, yeah, that would be nice. That 2,500 people putting that in is insane. That's insane. That's a lot of people writing in that feature. It's almost a third of the survey people, or survey respondents wrote that in. They better add that. Browser compat, still the top pain point. Form element styling, still really high up there. Yeah, this checks out. State of web, yep, happy. Look at under 3% are unhappy in some form. We're in a really good place in style land. And in CSS in general, still like 2-ish percent unhappy. Everyone else is happy. That's so cool to see. This is useful too, the learning methods. I always love seeing this. People love saying videos aren't that big a deal. There you go. Over a third of the respondents use videos and screencasts to learn. Over half as many as do self-directed learning. And we all do this. So that's, that's real significant. There's only one section we're here for. People. Did they not put me in this one? Sasha, we have beef. Other answers. Absolutely robbed. I'm gonna find my DMs with him quick because I wanna show you guys what he sent me because it makes this make much more sense. I know your channel is not primarily focused on CSS, but just in case, I wanted to let you know the latest survey results are out. Sir, it is very focused on CSS. Videos, popular. Number seven, my most popular video. One of my most popular videos on my channel is a CSS video. Bullshit. I better be in the next one. 10 months ago, shh, 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 shh. don't tell them. I have so many Tailwind videos. Some of my best performing videos right now are Tailwind stuff. So in the JavaScript survey, I was written in an insane amount. That's why I was thinking that I would have snuck in here. It's fine. We'll make sure I'm number one next year. Anyways, let's take a look at the awards quick. Most adapted feature has. Gap is up really high up too. Subgrid for the most commented feature. Highest retention. Open props. Interesting. And Panda. So the usage of newer CSS features has been trending upwards. Usage of CSS frameworks has been on a downward slope. Bold, but not entirely false. There's 
more stuff built into CSS than there ever has been. And the need for a lot of these frameworks to do everything for us is going down. Oh, text wrap balance is so good. It's so good. It was also interesting that so many developers felt that animating to auto and masonly were missing in CSS features. It's true, it's always been tricky for browsers to determine element dimensions, especially height, when they're not explicitly declared. But as Lee mentioned last year, with initiatives such as interop bringing browsers together, features thought previously impossible can now potentially become reality. I think it was a good survey. Huge shout out to Sasha and everybody responsible for making these surveys a thing. I do really love them. And it's so cool going over how the CSS and the whole web dev landscape is changing year over year. If you want to learn more about my thoughts on CSS and how I would compare a lot of the frameworks we talked about today, I'll put a video in the corner. It's one of my best videos. I go really in depth on all the different CSS frameworks that existed at the time and come to some interesting conclusions. I think you'll like it. Thank you guys as always. Really appreciate it. Peace nerds.